All right, going to take a look at Meredith Whitney here. And this is something, you know, virtually, I can assure you, nobody, nobody knows this. Nobody, you know, people don't follow this. You have to have a good history of understanding what went on over the past 15, 16, 17 years to understand when you're getting duped. Now, CNBC, the whole media mafia, they're always defrauding people. Now, understand this. Because the media is an absolute criminal enterprise. It seeks to deceive and defraud its audience for the benefit of its advertisers. It's the ad-based model, folks. Advertisement-based content is a scam. Okay? There's no free. If something is free, you're the sucker. You're the pigeon. Okay? You think you're getting something for free. In reality, you're getting reamed. I've been talking about this now for nearly 20 years and I focus on the financial media because it's the most obvious to see it because they have a pretty narrow genre, right? The topics that they talk about is pretty restricted. It's pretty easy to see the uh, agenda there, you see, whereas if it's a, if it's a, just a normal network, they have all different types of topics. Anyway, I'm not going to get into that. So this is, I, I saw this today. The growing crisis of young American males should send home prices falling for years or even decades, says the Oracle of Wall Street. I mean, who's that? It's, is it me? I mean, I'm the guy with the leading track record in the world. I don't know definitively, but I can tell you, I don't know of anyone else that has anywhere near my track record. And I'm so confident being a Wall Street insider, as I am, I've put up money backing that with, with more for more than, I think, 10 or 11 years that claim. Okay. I backed that with money. No one's ever come, come, come in uh, front of me because you see when people want to make claims and talk shit, they don't want to back it with money. They just want to yap, yap. Um, when I, when I make a claim about something, uh, I back it with money. Okay. I back it with money because I'm serious. There's no screwing around. So when I see someone call someone the Oracle of Wall Street, I mean, who predicted the financial crisis? Hopefully, by now, you know I did. Michael Burry did. No, he didn't, actually. He was a fund manager. He made a bet. He didn't tell anybody about his bet. He could have read my, my published books, which detailed what would happen in advance, right? You see, I'm not going to get into that. I've, I've already covered that so, so many times. But so let's see who they're talking about here. The Oracle of Wall Street. Well, it's Meredith Whitney. Deemed the Oracle of Wall Street for successfully calling the financial crisis. No, she didn't, folks. This is a patented lie. This is a blatant lie. That's a fact. And I'll bet anybody in the world as much money as they want. Anybody. Anybody. It's a fucking lie. The media is constantly making up claims like this. I predicted this would happen 10 years ago. I said, you know, because I saw what was happening. I was banned by the media. From the beginning, because I tried to warn Main Street about the collapse. I tried to warn Main Street about Wall Street fraud. I tried to warn Main Street about why their jobs were being shipped overseas, why their incomes and, and wealth was being stripped from them, what was going on, the scam of free trade. I tried to warn everyone about why they were getting ripped off from the health care system. I, I exposed America completely in addition to having predicted what would end up being the financial crisis two years after I wrote about it. That's why I was banned, by the way. After I was banned and all these con artists and broken clocks and scammers and idiots were being promoted in the media, I said, you know what? I can tell what's going to happen. 10 years, 20 years down the road, you're going to continue to see more and more people come out of the woodwork and claim they predicted the financial crisis. Why? Because as time goes on, people are going to forget and they're just going to trust the media. And I know the media is a criminal organization. They, they're completely fraudulent. They're lying all the time. And in fact, many people pay the media to get promoted, like Robert Kiyosaki. You may be wondering why he's being thrown out all over the media all the time. It's stupid. You know, oh, Robert Kiyosaki says, uh, you know, this and that. Yeah, Dave Ramsey, that's all bullshit. That's PR. They're paying for that garbage, by the way, in case you all don't know that. Meredith Whitney absolutely did not call the financial crisis. She's a joke. And in fact, 
she's trying to uh, she, she's trying to build her business now to lure in kind of a YouTube low hanging fruit crowd, the retail sheep. See, before Meredith Whitney was an analyst with C at CIBC, okay, she was an analyst at CIBC. She came out with the report in October on October thirty first, two thousand and seven. Now that was, if you might remember, that was almost exactly one year before the peak of the financial crisis. However, most of you, well, none of you know this, but by October 2007, the financial crisis had already begun, but nobody knew this but me. Okay, well, I'm not going to say I'm the only one. I'm sure some of the fund managers who are, who are watching it closely are also new. But I was one of the few people to have known. Why? Because I wrote about what would happen and I was watching things. In fact, I think it was for someone who, who was really on top of it, it was pretty obvious that it had begun by the summer of 2007, even though there were things before that that clearly uh, were problematic. But anyway, my point is this. Meredith Whitney wrote a report on October 31st, 2007. From that report, she was attributed to have, having predicted the financial crisis. Now, I'm going to show you that report. Maybe has it, you all have probably seen Meredith Whitney, right? Meredith Whitney, you know, just, 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 She's all over the place. She's she's engaging in PR now, and of course Meredith Whitney. She's a she's she's in the right cabal, you know. So she gets the exposure. I'll break another one to you here. Tim Sykes, the penny stock day trading scam artist, fraudster, liar, loser who couldn't trade his way out of a corner if he had assistance from Wall Street. He pays for PR. He gets on TV show. He pays the people. Larry King, he paid. Steve Harvey, he paid. CNBC, so on and so forth. But anyway, I mean, all, let me just mention, in case you all don't know, every single person that promotes day trading as a lucrative long-term investment strategy is a fraudster. They're a scammer. Write that down. Now, it's important to know, of course, about my background when I'm making these claims. Folks, most important thing you can do in your life, especially these days when everyone's a blabbermouth, everyone thinks that, whoa, I've got a microphone and a computer. I can speak my views. No, some people need to shut their fucking mouths and, and, and keep quiet until they learn something in life before they're just blabbering, making fools out of themselves. These days, though, all that matters if you, the, mo the more you blabber, you know, oh, he's blabbering. I want to listen to him. So the most important thing you need to do is understand truly who you're listening to. If you're going to listen to somebody, understand their credibility. Okay. Everyone's opinion is not equal. Now I know you snowflakes out there, you all have grown up in a generation where this whole egalitarianism thing, oh, everyone's equal. Everything is equal. All, we're all equal. Everything is, every, everyone's opinion is not equal. There are people who are more educated. They're older. They're more experienced. They're wiser, right? I'm a Wall Street insider, one of the top investment analysts in the world. I want you to, to, to remember that when you hear me make these claims, that day trading is a scam. Everybody who's promoting day trading is a scam. Now, look, I'm not saying you can't make some day trades, okay? Sometimes short-term trading can be lucrative. It can be a good thing. You can make quick money. The problem is that you have to be disciplined. You have to be disciplined to know, hey, you know what? This is something I'm not going to be doing much of, right? Because if you're not disciplined, you can fall into the trap of distorting your mindset and your strategy, and, and you can just blow yourself up. But people that are promoting day trading as a sustainable investment strategy, right? They're liars and scammers. And that's a fact. Every single person out there, show me somebody and you have them come to me. Prove it to me, not to some fucking chump on YouTube with their, you know, and once again, I said this earlier, people that do live trading, that can be that folks, everything on YouTube can be faked. Okay. Believe me, you can set up servers to fake everything. If you really want to go high tech where people aren't going to de de detect it at all. Okay. Anyway, Meredith, now I'm going to show you the report. Okay. I'm going to show you the report and I'm going to show you what. Meredith Whitney wrote that supposedly has uh, 
provided her with this stature of having predicted, not just having predicted the financial crisis, but the Oracle of Wall Street? I mean, are you fucking kidding me? So let me give you a little more background before we show you that report. Now, Meredith Whitney, and I take offense to this because, of course, I predicted the financial crisis with more detail and accuracy than anybody in the world. There's no comparison. Zero. Zero. Okay? If you don't know that about me by now, you're behind the curve. Take a look at the description for the links. And most of you probably aren't really going to truly understand unless you're uh, a professional in the investment world and you've been around for a while. But just to give you an idea, after you read the the chapters that I have posted for free online on archive.org uh, on the real estate bubble and uh, shorting, you know, my recommendations to, to short all these stocks that went bankrupt, the banking stocks, Fannie, Freddie. After you do that, then go and see and check anyone else and see if they did that compare. So in other words, you know, who do you, you know, who, who is attributed to a to predict the financial crisis? Peter Schiff, read his book, his original book, cash crash proof, which by the way, was released after my book, read his book. It didn't predict shit. Okay. He was wrong about almost everything. That's fact. You can write it down. Okay. Who else? Who else? So even Robert Kiyosaki is claiming he predicted the financial. Everyone's fucking claiming that now, but nobody did but me. Write it down. Now, you can go out there and find a top person, find a astute, uh, uh, well-established business and finance professor at a good school. Okay? I'll debate them on that. Okay? Uh, find a top fund manager. Okay? Find somebody top tier to go up against me to debate this. That's that's who I'm wanting. And I'll put money up against it, by the way. Tell the person, I will. we, we can front money for, for charity. We'll put it to the, the, the favorite charity, okay? Anyway, no one's gonna come. No one's gonna come. So let me, let me get back to Meredith Whitney. So, you know, I predicted all these things and of course I'm, I'm banned for no reason whatsoever other than me having exposed everything. And of course, if you threaten to expose the gravy train that people in control are running, you're going to get banned. Now, sometimes you can do that if you are of a certain, um, a certain ethnicity. They'll let it slide, you see. But for the most part, you can't expose the gravy train of scams. You can't expose Wall Street like I did. You can't expose corporate America like I did, including the free trade scam, which I wrote about in detail in my book in 2006. Right? Think about that. Think about that foresight, by the way. I wrote about how that was destroying middle class America, destroying working class America in detail. And I wrote about how it was creating national security threats because of China, how we were uh, allowing our intellectual property to be transferred and stolen by China. I wrote about that. 2006. I mean, think about that. Think about that for a second. Okay. Anyway, so Meredith Whitney, I don't know when, when like she was dubbed as having predicted the financial crisis, but I know this. <clears throat> she went off on her own about sometime, I don't know, 2008 or something. But if she predicted the financial crisis, don't you think that she would have made some predictions like, oh, well, the banks are going to fail. This is, no, she never did that. Let me go ahead and show you now her, the report. And you can look it up on your own. Whenever you hear Meredith Whitney predicted the financial crisis, you know it's a lie. Jim Rickards, it's a lie. All these people, lie, 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 lie. Okay? Let me show you. Here it is. Here's here's Meredith Whitney's report. You can see October 31st, 2007. Remember, and you can look this up if you don't believe me. Look this up and you'll see... And some other articles will say, oh, well, when she, she predicted that Citigroup was going to cut their dividend. Are you kidding? You know how easy it is for me to predict companies cutting their dividend? I have probably like a 95% track record on that. It's fucking pretty easy. It's not that difficult. Okay. But that's all. That's, that's not. I just, I'm giving you some context there. It's not that difficult. But some other articles you're going to hear 
uh, they're going to say, well, yes, she predicted that Citigroup would, you know, cut their dividend. And that's, you know, they, they attribute that to her predicting the financial crisis. I kid you not. Here's the full report. Okay. CIBC. And here's, here's the kind of the summary. Our thesis is simple. We believe over the near term, Citigroup will need to raise over $30 billion in capital through either asset sales, a dividend cut, a capital raise, or a combination thereof. Okay, We believe such a catalyst will pressure the stock significantly lower and accordingly downgrade from SU to SP. Sector underperform, I'm sure, to sector perform, right? Downgrade sector, yeah. So, 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 so think about that for a second. So she's saying basically that they need capital. She feels that they need capital for, for whatever reason. She's going to go into it in the report, whatever. And as a result of that, because they need to raise capital, they need to, need to sell some assets or, or cut the dividend. That, whatever they decide to do, you know, uh, cut the dividend or sell assets, that's going to cause the stock to go down. Okay? So she downgraded it from sector perform to underperform. She didn't even downgrade it to sell. I mean, did she say, we think they're going to have a, a financial crisis? You understand. This is what the media is using to claim she predicted the financial crisis. Are you fucking kidding me? If you think it's anywhere remotely close, you need to read my material where I actually discuss everything. <laughs> I explain everything. How Wall Street securitizes mortgages and they go through the process and work with the credit rating agencies and how the credit rating agencies are fucking rubber stamping it all. How there's all fraud fraud going on. So this is it. But according to the media, Meredith Whitney, you understand, this is fraud. This occurs on a daily basis with the media. They claim people and they know people aren't going to check into it. You all aren't going to know this. You're not going to catch this. You're going to read the title. Meredith Whitney predicted the financial crisis. And you're going to believe it. You're going to fucking believe it. Okay? Oracle of Wall Street. So why is this fraud? It's fraud because, first of all, it's like these YouTubers. It's media fraud. It's clickbait. It's fucking lie. They're getting you interested in this piece because based upon the lie, based upon this presumption that she that she predicted the financial crisis. She's an oracle. No, it's not true. And I'm going to show you here, not only she's not an oracle, she's a fucking investment disaster. She's a failure, a complete joke. She was laughed out of the business. I'm going to show you. It's also fraud because she's building a name, getting a, a exposure because she's launched her little research firm after hiding for like eight years away from the public. I'll show you here in a second. So you can see here, 2023, uh, Meredith Whitney, who predicted the financial crisis, Barron's. Barron's, I've already known this, and I've got thousands of uh, other uh, 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 pieces of evidence, but you can see now, Barron's is a fraud. Barron's is a fraud. It's a scam. You're seeing, they're making a bold-faced lie. Bold-faced lie. Of course, by Andy Server, who is a former Yahoo Finance boiler room loser. Email this guy. Tell him, tell him they're lying. It's a fraud. CNBC, fraud, fraud. Promoting her again. You see, so what's going on right now is Meredith Whitney is engaging. She's paying PR firms because she's trying to launch her uh, an investment research for, for retail people. See, let me, let me give you some more background. Notice this. Mer Whitney's Armageddon bellied by best returns of 2011 Muni credit. So here's the deal. You might recall, if you're old enough, Meredith Whitney is like another scammer uh, with a similar name, Whitney Tilson. Whitney Tilson, I know, I remember quite well because during the time 15 years ago, 13 years ago, 14, when he was trashing Netflix, I was recommending it the whole time, ever since I wrote in one of my books in 2008 to buy it, it's going to take over the DVD rental business and Blockbuster is going to go bankrupt, which is why I recommended to short it in a book. And by the way, if you can find any other book that's ever recommended to short a stock, I want to see it. Nobody ever does that. You know why? Because it can go against you. Shorting is typically a short-term thing. 
So if you have somebody who's putting in a book to short something, first of all, they've got balls of titanium. Okay. And if it pans out, they go bankrupt or near bankrupt, then they got brains that are, I don't know what you can, you can decide. Okay. So here's the deal. Meredith Whitney departed a couple of years later and she tried to start a research firm and she was so arrogant, you know, that the media was giving her a lot of hype and, oh, Meredith Whitney, she predicted, she didn't predict shit. And so what did she do? So she tried to make waves and she comes out with this whole thing, which is on 60 Minutes. You can probably see it on, on ScamTube back in around 2011, I think it was. She, she predicted that, the, that there would be more than 200 defaults in America, 200 municipal defaults, okay? 200, more than 200, and causing a huge problem. Now, I predicted there would be a, a couple of defaults, okay? Uh, but namely with shit zones that were, you know, that had been troubled, all, you know, all along. You know, the, weak, the weak players, you know, Cleveland, uh, uh, Detroit. Right. But Meredith Whitney's talking about more than 200 defaults and 60 minutes gave her airtime. They promoted her. So what happened? What happened? And you can go see that. You should see the 60 minutes. okay? because they're going to make her out like she's some some, you know, Oracle. She didn't predict the financial crisis. okay? this is what the media does, folks. And most people know almost nobody knows this. No, nobody spends the time and has the expertise to find this out. So I, I suggest you look into it because looking into this, and I'm giving you, you know, already a lot of fuel here is, is uh, you'll understand how the media works. Okay. Because the media, this is the highest level of scams. I mean, YouTube is a joke. It's just fucking obvious to these guys. Uh, so what did Meredith Whitney do? Well, we didn't have a municipal default situation. Muni's rallied, did well. And so she was panicking. In the meantime, she was offering her research to institutions for $100,000 a year. <laughs> that didn't go over too well. Okay, with her Muni bond thing, complete collapse. That collapsed in her face. Muni, Muni's didn't collapse. You can just go through and read these headlines. Meredith Whitney loses credibility as Muni defaults fall 60%. So she, then she launched a hedge fund. So she failed with that. A couple of years later, she launched a hedge fund. That failed. That failed. And so she was done. Okay. She was done. And she basically disappeared out of the public for about eight years. And so she's coming back now. There you go. Meredith Whitney on 60 Minutes. 2010, December 2010. Meanwhile, I can't get a single fucking interview to save my life. Think about that. Remember, folks, I'm the guy who was banned who could have who could have enabled you guys to make a fortune. If you'd known about me, read my books, and I can't get an interview to save my life. Think about that. The call that anticipated, no, it didn't. That's a lie. They're always lying, the media. She's here, you know. So... Meredith Whitney is a fraud. There's nobody out there other than me that predicted the financial crisis. There were people that made money off the financial crisis, but that's not a prediction. Making a bet is not a prediction, right? You understand the difference between if you're going to predict, if you're going to claim to have predicted something as colossal, as unprecedented as the financial crisis, which we've never seen before, anything like that. You have to present a very detailed thesis explaining a lot of things like I did. Get to know what's what went on back then. Get to know once you get to know, if you really know like what was going on, who predicted who said what, you'll see I'm the only person that predicted every, anything with that. I predicted it all. Okay? I mean, not 100% accuracy obviously, but when you're writing in a book recommending people to short subprimes 
and Fanny and Freddie. Nobody shorted Fanny and Freddie. Nobody thought Fanny and Freddie would collapse. I recommended a short because I knew all that shit was going down the fucking drain. Two years before it happened. Think about that. How does that stack up to fund managers who made a bet, who didn't tell anybody about the bet, who could have hedged their bet, who could have gotten out of their bet if it did if it went against them? I wrote a thesis and I'm banned. Okay? Think about that. The more you get to know about me, the more you're going to open your eyes. And you're going to start questioning things. Because I can tell you what happened to me during that period, boy, I've never been the same. I, I didn't realize what was going on, honestly. I started to, to I, I tried to, I, I was wondering, like, what is going on? Why am I being banned? I opened my eyes. I realized part of it's uh, racial discrimination. Okay. That's part of it. And then part of it's also about uh, hiding the truth. You can't reveal the reality. You can't expose something that's going to cause people to not, to, you know, to not make a lot of money. I exposed free trade, the whole free trade scam back in 2006. I explained in detail in my book. And if you if you want to see, like, I have a video on this site you can take a look at. Um, it, I, I, I include most, many of the excerpts of trade. You can just, you know, you can read those excerpts to understand the big picture of what ha has happened to America. You couldn't talk about any of this stuff before. Okay, you couldn't talk about the trade issue, anything like that. No one wanted to talk about that. Only since Trump brought it up has it been a topic, has people have people started to think about it. Okay. So obviously corporate America, you know, a big gravy train for them. Corporate America, and I wrote about this stuff. I said, look, corporate America has committed treason, and Washington has as well. They sent our jobs over to other countries. This doesn't happen anywhere else in the world. At that time, it didn't. Now it's kind of a, a, a virus, right? No other country does that at that time. You don't send jobs. And in fact, many of the countries that have the strong societies, you know, the countries that have closed borders, they, you know, they don't open their borders to anybody that wants to come in. They, they don't send jobs overseas. If they did, the people would riot. Why would you send jobs? Why would you send the ability to earn income? Why would you take food off the table of your citizens and put it into another country? And, you know, you're hearing things about China now. And of course, I've been, I've been researching China for almost 20 years. I'm an authority on China. I pre predicted China, the boom and the bust with the tail.
terms of getting back as an investor, if it's coming down to here, almost, almost irrespective of what's going on, I have to believe if I have to make a call in advance, and of course I can change depending upon what happens, but I have to believe this is where you want to start doing that 18, 17, around there. Their earnings report is a complete game changer, at least for quite a while. Bottom line, NVIDIA now is going to enter the realm of Tesla, uh, Apple, and all these other big, you know. I mean, listen, NVIDIA can, can come down to 150, come down to 100 bucks. If you don't think it's possible, then you don't understand how the market works. I mean, listen, NVIDIA can, can come down to 150, come down to 100 bucks. If you don't think it's possible, then you don't understand how the market works.